Apology today from President Obama for something that happened more than 60 years ago. The U.S. conducted secret medical experiments that involved intentionally infecting Guatemalan metal patients with sexually transmitted diseases. Tonight, Guatemala is calling it a crime against humanity and says it may take the case to an international court. NBC's chief science correspondent Robert Bizell broke the story this morning. He has this late update tonight. The secret experiments took place in Guatemala between 1946 and 1948, financed by the U.S. government and supervised by U.S. government doctors. Susan Riverby, a professor at Wellesley College who has studied medical malfeasance extensively, found the evidence in U.S. government records. I thought that, and frankly, that I wouldn't get shocked, but I thought this one was pretty horrific. The details of how they did it um, were pretty graphic, and I was actually quite surprised. The doctors inoculated almost 700 prostitutes, institutionalized mental patients, and prisoners with the germs that cause either syphilis or gonorrhea. The subjects did not give their permission and were not told what was happening. They were injected in the skin, the genitals, even the spine. Infected female prostitutes were also sent into the prison and mental hospital to infect men. They knew that this wasn't appropriate. The Surgeon General even said, we couldn't do this in the United States. The miracle of penicillin. The experiments were designed to study the effects of penicillin on sexually transmitted disease. Still, as many as a third of the patients were not properly treated. Today, outrage on the streets of Guatemala's capital and in newspapers online, and from Guatemalan Americans in Los Angeles. Actually, I'm very surprised and upset. It's like a combination of feelings because uh, it's been a long time already, but uh, it's something outrageous, I would call it. The incident recalls the infamous Tuskegee, Alabama syphilis experiment. What is now called the Tuskegee experiment began here in 1932. From 1932 until the research was revealed in the press in 1972, government doctors lied to hundreds of African-American men who were infected naturally. The doctors, some also involved in the Guatemala experiment, told the men they were getting treatment, but in fact they were not. Despite numerous apologies, that incident has left many black Americans wary of the medical establishment. It still resonates after generations to generations, and people still talk about it. So this uh, legacy of, of, of mistrust in the African American community still exists. Even though the Guatemala experiment took place more than 60 years ago, officials today call on the prestigious Institute of Medicine to launch a full investigation and identify steps to prevent further abuses. Another example of the most vulnerable being victimized and of doctors who ignore their